So, Carolyn, you're responsible for one of Australia's most fabled business stories, from an art student with $1,000 in her pocket to a multi-million dollar business today. What are the most important ingredients for your growth over that time? I've just always tried to learn as I go and make tomorrow a little bit better than yesterday. So every five years I look back and go, well, look how much better the company is now. I never anticipated, I can promise you, it would be as big as it is today, but I'm super proud. At what stage did you know that it was sustainable? Oh, probably not until about five years in. If I could have given up in the first five years, I absolutely would have, but it wasn't like you could just go in and resign and walk away. You know, I owed money to people and I wanted to do the right thing and I was getting my brother to siphon petrol out of my mum's car. <laughs> I was doing whatever I could to try and pay the bills. I had to run to the bank every day at four o'clock to make sure that I got the checks in so they wouldn't bounce overnight. You know, it was really incredibly tough. So was that the motivation, the financial pressure, or was there something else driving you? Look, I think I was always driven by the pride, and I still am. So the, the fact of thinking, wow, well, could I make this a success? And if you think over 20 years ago, Muesli was really daggy. Like, you know, I'd go to a party and they'd go, you sell Muesli? Whereas now Muesli's quite popular and quite trendy and, you know, I'd just keep knocking on the doors. And eventually when I'd get it in, I'd be so proud. I'd go in, I'd put Uncle Toby's on the bottom shelf and a big you know, thing of Carmen's at eye level when no one was watching. And then as times... Um, unfolded, you know, I've never lost that sense of pride and passion for the business. I was at the airport the other day and I put something in the bin and there was three different Carmen's wrappers. I got my phone out, I got in the bin, I was taking photos of them. And I think for me that that's what drives you. It's that purpose and that, that sense of pride in what you do. And you've got a young family. How do you maintain these energy levels? <sighs> well, I eat lots of muesli. No, uh, <laughs> I, um, you know, I've got a, a four, six, eight and ten year old. And for me, I just try and be really present when I'm at work. You know, really the growth of Carmen's has happened since I had my kids and maybe step back and realise that I wasn't the jack of all trades and there was amazing people out there that could do things better than me. Um, and how hands on are you today in the business? Um, well, I would say not completely, but I'm sure my staff would say absolutely. Basically, nothing new would ever come through, um, whether it be product or packaging that I haven't been part of. So they're the, that's the big piece, that I'm very involved in, in what we release and what our current range is tasting and looking like, and then also the, the packaging and how we're labelling something and down to the font. And, you know, today I'm looking at window shapes on muesli bar wrappers and I will spend a long time talking to that team about that. But when it comes to kind of inventory or finance, I let those guys just go for it. <laughs> You've had terrific success with, your export, with the export side of your business. Yeah. Um, what did you need to do to prepare the business for that? Well, I remember having the first meeting and the guy said, you know, will you be open to sending LCL or are you insisting on selling FCL? And I was like, oh, look, I'll just get back to you tomorrow on that. Having no idea what this terminology and this whole new world of export, full container loads, less than container loads, and, you know, getting that very first little account into Tesco's in, in Malaysia and then slowly building it up. We now export to 32 countries. And what have I learnt? You know, I've learnt that you can't just have a cookie-cutter approach and you need to look at a country. So, for example, we've got a big um, launch in China at the moment and having to look at how our name sounds in China and you, because you can't just presume that it's said in English and what would that sort of sound like. So you really do have to look at big countries and, and big opportunities as individual um, pieces of work and not just say, well, this is what we do in Australia, everyone else, you can just take this. Looking over your business journey, you've obviously had huge experience. Your advice for other small businesses just getting started? I think at, at the beginning you just want to say I'm going to start whether it's a farmer's market on the weekend or whatever I'm just going to put that first step to actually trying to make this happen. It doesn't have to be in a huge way it just needs to be progressing from the idea to can I make this happen and then as you start progressing to think hang on maybe this has got some traction really thinking well hang on how can I improve what can I do don't just put your blinkers on how can I make it like I said better tomorrow than it was yesterday what things do I need to do to work on making you know working on your business and not just in it it's a terrific business story and you look like you couldn't be happier thanks a lot for your time Caroline. <laughs> thanks so much